Hey guys, welcome to True Story Sunday. Uh, I'm trying out a new camera angle here, so I hope that it will stop some or all of you from crying like babies about not being able to see anything. What do you want, your money back? Um, the problem is this helmet just does not have a good place. Well, most helmets I think are like that, do not have good places for cameras. Anyways, today's story is about a car that is one of my favorite cars. You know when, you have, when you're younger and you have a car and you think it's terrible and so you sell it and then you get older and you have all these memories about those cars and you think, oh my gosh, why did I ever sell that car? This was that car for me. I wish, I wish that I still had it, but if I had it, I would probably hate it and never drive it. But at that time in my life, it was glorious. I came across this car completely by accident. Um, I had fallen in love with a Suzuki SV650. And I, I had gone to the dealership like five times that week and I was going to buy it. I wanted it so bad. I needed some new transportation. And uh, everyone was telling me that I would be killed. Of course, don't buy it. You'll be instantly killed. So I was scared to buy it, but I wanted it. You know, when you want something, I wanted that bike. So I was driving there one day to go and look at it and talk to the guy about financing and all that. And I happened to see a sign that said uh, police auction this way. And so uh, I was like, well, I'll go check that out. And so I, I cruised over there and it was uh, they were auctioning off old police cars. And my favorite movie on earth um, is the Blues Brothers. And they drive an old cop car, an old uh, Plymouth Fury. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could have my own blues mobile? I have to do this. And so I came back, me and a couple of my buddies went back there and I had like $1,400 and I bid. There was one There was one that I wanted but didn't get. I got outbid and then there was two that I wanted. The first one I got outbid on and then the second one I got and I spent twelve hundred dollars on this I don't remember what year it was it had about a hundred thousand miles on it and uh, it was awesome I mean it, it had two bench seats so you could fit six people in it and at the time I was really big into snowboarding so not only could you fit six of your best friends in the car but you could also fit six snowboards and six pairs of boots and coats and snow pants in the trunk. You did not even need a roof rack like so many other cars did. You just all went in the trunk. It was it was the best car ever, not only because of the space, not because you could fit all your friends and all their gear in it, but because everyone got the hell out of your way because it still looked just like a cop car. It was a Provo police car. What's happened here? Uh... Wait a minute, I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't where I thought I was going. Totally lost. Or they've changed something. That's Utah Lake back there. Anyways, turn it around. So, I used to know my way around these old back roads, but I'm lost. So, completely lost track of where I was. Oh yeah, everyone got the hell out of your way. And it had, the Provo police cars had a, they were white and they had a blue stripe. It was like a couple different shades of blue running horizontally along the side of the car. And then underneath that, it said Provo police in great big letters. And they had ripped those, they had ripped those letters off. But they had left all of the glue that had held the letters on. So when the car got dirty, it said Provo Police on it, plain as day. And I put a, hair, a pair of handcuffs hanging from the rearview mirror, and uh, I would go cruising around. And uh, I got in trouble once. I wasn't doing anything. There were sometimes I would mess with people, like on a dark road, 
we'd be cruising around and cruising along and someone would pass us going the other way and I'd flip a U-turn real quick and follow them and uh, they would usually just pull over <laughs> but it was funny it helped me learn how to drive casually when cops are around because it's it was funny to watch people's reaction when I was behind them because they were so sure that I was a cop they would just tense up you could just you could uh, you could see them like adjust their posture to like have good posture it's like why why would you do that it makes you look so guilty so the worst thing you can do is jam on your brakes or sit straight up <laughs> or whatever but you just gotta relax just keep doing what you were doing hopefully you weren't doing anything that bad but uh, so one time I'm driving along, I'm in the Bluesmobile, I'm cruising through Provo, and I see a cop, and he's he like crosses through an intersection in front of me, and then I see another cop going the opposite direction, and he flips a U-turn, and wait a minute, and uh, he flips a U-turn and starts. Man, I'm super lost now. There's the road. So uh, he's, this cop, he starts following me. And I'm like, why are there so many cops in one place all of a sudden? I remember thinking that. This cop starts following me and I come to a red light and, and he's right behind me. And as soon as the light turns green, he flips his lights on and pulls me over. And he had pulled me over right in front of a uh, car dealership. And as soon as I stopped in front of the car dealership, another cop car pulled out of the car dealership and parked in front of me so I could not leave. I couldn't like just you know in case I decided to run from the cops I couldn't do it. So this guy has there's a cop behind me so I can't back up and there's a cop in front of me so I can't go forward and then three more cop cars surround me in this, in this car and I'm just like have my hands on the wheel and I'm like oh crap I'm going to jail I'm not making any sudden movements my ass is going to jail and uh, so he walks up I don't I don't roll down my window or anything until he gets right up to the car you know my hands on the wheel the whole time you do not want to spook these guys because they're obviously on edge about something so he comes up and uh, knocks on the window, I roll it down, and he was actually really cool with me. He was just like, hey, what's, you know, we had a report that someone is impersonating a police officer, which, which was a lie. I, you know, sometimes cops, I think they bluff. He was bluffing when he said that, because I had just, just barely left a friend of mine's apartment. I, would, I mean, I had just been parked, and then that's it. That's what I wanted. Another vlog filled with U-turns. River Lane. So. So I just, he just explained to me that I look very much like a, a police officer and that uh, that could be dangerous because people might come and ask me for help or people might decide that they hate cops and shoot at me or sometimes that happens those guys have a dangerous job so he you know he said like why does it still say Provo police on the side of your car I'm like man this is how you guys sold it this is how you sold it to me scrape it all off if you want it gone what can I do I don't have any money so he asked me to take the handcuffs out of the out of the windshield and I didn't have a key for him but they were just fake handcuffs. He's like, well, here, use my key. And I'm like, well, they're not real handcuffs. I have to use like a little screwdriver to jimmy them open. So he's, so, uh, nah, anyways, they were cool and they let me go after a while. And uh, actually some of them left, you know, he stayed talking to me and he kind of waved the other guys off like he's, he's not a bad guy. <clears throat> so that was pretty intense. I had six cop cars surround me. It was cool. Made for a, a good story to all my buddies when I got back. Um, the Bluesmobile was was the best car ever. Be and I think it was the safest car ever because 
everyone yielded to me. You come to a four-way stop, no one would dare go because they there was a, this tiny chance that I might be a cop, and they didn't want to be. Uh, they want me to be behind them. And uh, one night, actually, where I'm driving now is uh, is to Utah Lake. And I was out there. We were out there at a big party, and we had uh, a whole bunch of pallets. And we're having a pallet fire because it's this big sandy beach. Man, I did not want to be behind this joker. Dust. So it's this big sandy beach. We had this big bonfire. We used to go out there and have a lot of fun. And I had a like a box. It was a box like this, you know, just like a just looked like a big empty cardboard box. And I went and tossed it on the fire. And there was it was kind of after the bonfire had died down a little bit. And oh man, I smell a skunk. And I can't see anything. <clears throat> so the bonfire had, it had died down. I threw this box on it, and uh, the box was full of bottle rockets. <laughs> so everybody was in around close around the bonfire, and then all hell broke loose, and everyone everyone went running for their lives. <clears throat> so everybody hated me because of that. I gotta get out of this dust, man. <clears throat> So, to make things worse, because I'd already pissed everyone off at the, at the old bonfire, I went and got in the Bluesmobile, and uh, I started driving through the fire in it. It was a $1,200 car, it was just, and it was so tough. It was built like a truck. So, it was awesome just to go and, and beat it up. <laughs> and I drove through the fire a couple times, and then everybody went home. I ruined the I ruined their all their fun. Oh my gosh. Almost crashed. Little sandy. We call this place Sandy Beach. And the sand is like my worst enemy. Um But this is where I wanted to come because I had some adventures in the blues mobile here. And it's just a kind of a cool place. It's not too far away from town. <clears throat> So anyways, the Bluesmobile, um, eventually I sold it. I traded it in on another car and I didn't get anything for it, but uh, I liked the car, I just didn't have anywhere to put it. Um, but if you have kids, like if you have kids and they're turning 16, I highly recommend getting them an old cop car because mine had electrical problems because they fill it with all this extra stuff, like cop stuff, you know, electrical gadgetry and then they rip all they rip it all out so mine was always having these weird electrical problems and that was one reason I wanted to sell it but uh man this place is cool but it's a super safe car because everyone yields to you you're in the fast lane on the freeway everyone gets out of the way so you've got like the freeway to yourself Every four-way stop you come to, you're going to get waved through by the other drivers who are waiting. And uh, everyone's super nice to you because you're in a cop car. No one wants to mess with you. 1200 bucks, one of the awesomest cars I've ever had. We had, we had so much. We took a trip. Uh, it was New Year's Eve. And I live about six hours from Vegas. You know, it, was, it was New Year's Eve morning, and someone's like, hey, Let's go to Vegas for, for New Year's Eve, for the countdown. I was like, all right. So we piled in the Bluesmobile, and we burned for Vegas. And we had three guys in the back and two in the front and a TV in the middle seat. And we hooked up the Xbox, and we played Tony Hawk, Pro Skater, and, uh, and what else? And Madden. It was like, man, we just played like one game of Madden, and we're like one and a half games of Madden, and we're already in Vegas. <laughs> Kind of made us realize how much time we waste playing video games. It didn't stop us. Uh, here's the lake, and here's some guys with pallets. Because they're coming for a bonfire. Oh, snap. So sandy. So the Bluesmobile was legit. I love that. But it's gone now. I don't know who has it or what happened to it. What is this? Some kind of... You think you're... 
in the middle of nowhere and then there's some kind of baton death march going on out here anyways uh this has been a true story sunday ride safe travel far do it soon oh look at all that sand oh shit